Welcome to the Picking Nerds. Today, we're doing a Joel Rael Manvuli Recluse Deck Tech. Wow. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you how to make a mono green card draw deck. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. Do you like innovative, format-warping deck techs that will blow your mind and open you up to new ideas? That's all we've ever done. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, and besides, you want to be subscribed to this channel because our subscribers are 10% less likely to trip. The Nitpicking Nerds wanted me to inform you that this is a pun because uh, you're less likely to trip, but you still can trip. Can trip. Get it? <laughs> We're so funny. I get it. Well, disclaimer guy. What? He's, he's, what, a, he's... what a jolly fella. Why don't we just read Joe Riel because she's the newest spoiler from Command Co Core, Core 21. Yeah, Command Core 21. Secretly, this set looks like a master set because it's so good. Joe Riel Moonvali Recluse is a one and a green for a 1-2 legendary human druid. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 two -two green cat creature token. Four green green. Until end of turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Why does this text look so familiar, Joe? Uh, it looks so familiar because uh, Cat Lady, uh, the Jess guy one from... Gavi. Gavi. From... Uh, Core 20? Com or Commander Command 20. I literally <laughs> just mixed them both up. Full circle. Full circle. Uh, because she has the same text, she also makes some sort of cat when you draw your second card each turn. So the, the, the conclusion to draw is that any color can make two two cat tokens when you draw your second card, except black. Except black. Color yeah. pie, color pie. What is this deck actually going to do, though, similar to the Jeskai cycling deck? Well, we're going to draw our second card each turn as often as we can on as many turns as we can to get a lot of two twos. And maybe when we have some excess mana, make them real big. But well, that's not the focus. Well, the, it kind of is that, like, Joel Rail is the enabler and the payoff. You don't have to do anything. You just have her in your deck, and you really don't even have to try to win. You just make dudes and do the thing. Do the thing your deck's supposed to do, and then she will destroy your opponents. Yeah. Uh, how good is she going to be when you go her into Uro and Standard? I don't want to think about it because <laughs> I don't have to play that format. <laughs> <laughs> so what, is this, what else does this deck do? Because I feel like there's a little more to it that you're not getting to it. I, I'm so excited. So what's the first category? Actually? Yeah, the first category is cats every turn. Because if we're not making a cat every single turn, then we're sad because we want to pet all the little panther cats. So the first way to draw not one but two cards every turn What's going to happen is you have to draw one extra on your turn, and then you're going to try to draw two extra as many of the turns that aren't yours as humanly possible. So we are going to fly by most of these because there's a million different ways to draw two cards in a turn for cheap. First way is cycling. So we have lands that double as cyclers, so you can play a land, or you can cycle it when you don't need it. Tranquil Thicket, Slippery Karst, Desert of the Indomitable, and then we have cards that cycle that have effects. Chef and Monitor ramps you. Titan Oth Rex is a way to give trample that we will... Touch on later why that actually matters. What about some other ones? Uh, Wilt, which is uh, a disenchant that cycles. Dissenters Deliverance, which is another weird... It's Shatter that cycles. Yeah, it's Shatter that cycles. I was going to say, it's another weird one. I guess, it, yeah, it, that's a good way to put it. It's a Shatter that cycles. And this doesn't matter. This is this is a minor nitpick, but well, you called it the green, the one in a green. You called it a disenchant with cycling, not naturalized with cycling. Kind of just triggered me. Why did it trigger you? I don't know, because it's one in the green. <laughs> it is naturalized. It's a disenchant. Disenchant wasn't disenchant first. Naturalized is the, is the color shifted version. You know what? I can see. Uh, let's, uh, what, what other cycles are there? Uh, beneath the sands. What's that one do? It's two in a green. Search for a basic or cycling for two. And the migration path is three in a green. Two basics, cycling for two. This is better. Uh, explosive veggies. And veggie. We're not a huge fan of veggies, but when. The cycling has upside in your deck. Now veggies with cycling becomes very good. Oh, I don't need this card. Great. It's a cat. <laughs> it's half of a cat right now. Yeah, just throw your veggies away. Yeah, the other way to repeatedly get cats, cantrips, obviously. Cheap, efficient cantrips. Urza's Bobble, Mishra's Bobble, Conjurer's Bobble. They're all ways to you play them on your turn, and then you activate them so that you end up drawing a card on someone else's turn. So you plan your turn out so that this is going to fill in for a gap where you couldn't have drawn a card, like on the next upkeep. So if you want to draw a card on player three's turn, you crack it on player two's turn. Yeah. If you don't have any other ways to do it in your hand, say say you're just like kind of short on card draw, which this deck won't be too often, but sometimes it might. You can also crack it on the third player's turn right before you're about to go, and then you will get the cat on your turn. You get the cat right as soon as you start. Yeah, you'll get it on your draw step. Right. And then there's also, for your turn, where you only have to draw one, we can play stuff like Elvish Visionary, Satessin Training, which is one in a green for an enchantment aura. Creature gets plus one, plus oh, trample, and then you draw a card. Also relevant later. Yep. 
Kendra's Transformation, which is like sweet removal, just turn something into a 3-3, three, three, no abilities. You nuke somebody's commander, get your card, get a cat. That's yeah, and you draw a card. Yeah. yeah. That's what's, it. what's the That's other one. spicy one? Uh Vail of Summer, which has become a commander staple, especially for C E D H. Oh yeah. Which uh gives you and your permanents hexproof from black and blue. And if an opponent casts a black or blue spell, you draw a card. And your spells can't be countered this turn. Yes. Oh, That's yeah. That's just a general. That's just a given. Yeah. Basically, it gives your spells hexproof. Yeah. From... It's the green cryptic command, but it's a little specific. But this deck really, really wants it. So this... it's in the deck. Also, explore. Yeah. You this... know what explore is. Yeah. Nothing special. Bell of Summer is a card that absolutely has just been relevant in every single format. Because it's, it's just a mistake. It's a, it's a mistake. total mistake. They put 35 relevant words on an uncommon, and then they're like, why is there a problem? This is like one of the first sideboard cards that had to be banned. How weird is that? <laughs> yeah, because it's so stupid. I mean, I could see it getting banned in modern. It hasn't, right? I, I mean, it's banned in Pioneer and it's banned. It's banned in, in Pioneer and Standard yeah. and Historic and, or whatever. But and Historic. Yeah, yeah, there's also some other lands that we can use to, at instant speed, not cycle to draw cards. We got Gyre Reach Sanitarium, coolest land ever. Draw a discard for everybody. Mikokoro is a draw for everybody. And then Bonders Enclave from Coria is a land that produces colorless, or you can pay three and tap it. If you have a creature of power four or greater, you draw a card. Yeah, make sure you have a creature of power four or greater. Oh, we will. I mean, this is also one you can't get. You know where you can't get blown out with this because you can't activate the ability unless you control a creature. Yes, activate only creature. if <laughs> you can't be like, oh. What about this? What about this one? You love this little spaghetti. I monster. love this card. I haven't put it in a deck in like a year and a half. It's Endbringer, five and a Wingding for a five-five. It untaps on each other player's untap step, Wing. and it can either ping somebody or something. You can pay one Wingding and tap it. Something can't attack or block, or you can pay two Wingdings and tap it to draw a card. So if we we have plenty of colorless lands. This is mono green. We have no trouble fitting. I think there's like 11 colorless lands. Some of them make more than one colorless. Uh, that's just the easiest way ever to draw cards. Yeah, it untaps every single turn. It just it's. What more do I have to say? What more do you have to say? Not much. What's the next category? Uh, the next category is cards in hand because it's a question you're going to be asked way too often because the number is going to be varying so much that you probably won't even know yourself. Yeah, a quick thing worth mentioning right here is we're going to, I, I don't know if it's on this list, but because our hand size matters so much, Reliquary Tower, actually relevant for the deck. Not usually a card that's That's in the next category, Joe. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Reliquary Tower is a card actually very good in this deck because our hand size can easily get to 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 because we're drawing so many cards. I think you're shooting a little low there. We're going for like 25. I'm sorry. The the goal is Joel Rael's ability. That's going to win us the game. We're going to try to get like 20, 30, 40 cards in our hand. Okay. Yeah, so the the first uh, cards we want to cover briefly because they're kind of staples and we have like a million way spicier things to get through. We'll just show them on screen for a second. Titleist Tracker makes clues also good for drawing cards on other players' turns. Life from the Loam does not draw you cards, but it makes your hand size huge because you can keep getting back cycling lands or just lands in general. And then it's kind of like draw three in terms of your, what your hand size cares about. Mm-hmm. Like if it was 14, now it's 16. Yeah, and it's incredibly good. We have fetch lands in this deck, so we can get the fetch lands back. If you don't know synergy with fetch lands, read both the, those cards and you'll figure it out <laughs> yeah. quickly. Skull Clamp. Best card ever. Sylvan Library, actually pretty good in this deck because you can just kind of draw two cards a turn and then satisfy the cat thing. Easy. Sylvala, Heart of the Wilds, it's dumb. And it lets you draw extra cards and it makes a million mana. And it's really good with Joel Rail's uh, six mana ability. Yeah. Well, Sylvala is a silly good card. But let's get to like the real ways that we're not just cantripping. We need to actually increase the number of cards in our hand with repeated draw. We have to draw like, you know, we want three plus cards off all these. So what yeah. do we got? Uh, so we have Runic Armasaur, which is a... 2-5 Dinosaur for 4 mana. 1 green green. 1 green, three green mana. 3 mana, that's right. For 3 mana that says whenever a creature or land activates an ability that isn't the mana ability of your opponent's control, you draw a card. This is going to sit there, and I've played against it in competitive and non-competitive, and it's super annoying. Yeah, and there was no cut in the video because I'm perfect and I read the card perfect. He knew it. <laughs> uh, the next one up is Compost, a card I've never put into a deck before, but it's 1 and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a black card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may draw a card. Yeah, strange card. Compost it's, is it's really weird, weird. And I don't like playing color hosers in decks usually, but this deck needs a critical mass of just draw a bajillion cards. If it's dead, you don't have to play it. Uh, your hand size is probably going to be pretty huge. How is no one playing black also? And if you're really worried about it, go spend $60 on Painter Servant, and then you've got like the dumbest combo ever. Oh, yeah, that is pretty silly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then fecundity is two and a green for enchantment. <laughs> Whenever a creature dies, its controller draws a card. Such a fecundity. Fecundity. I don't know why. F- fecundity forever. I <laughs> knew you were going to say that. I knew it. I don't know why. It doesn't even sound like Wakanda. 
<laughs> Whatever. The, 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 <laughs> this card's great. Board wipes net you cards. It is a, a group effect, one of the only group effects in here. I don't think that's a problem. It kind of just means that fecundity might not die. Well, yeah, but it means we well, we take the most advantage of it because we're For also, sure. We, when we're drawing extra cards, we're getting cats. Most players aren't and, getting those cats. And the thing is, I'm fine cashing in all the cats for cards when they die to blocks or a board wipe or something because they're not. I didn't spend cards on them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Blocking with a cat feels so good if you get a fecundity. <laughs> yeah. What's the next one? Uh, Bag of Holding, which is a two-mana artifact? It's a one-mana artifact. Oh, my God. I'm so bad at this. It's a one-mana artifact, and you can pay two. To tap it, to draw, and then discard. And you could pay four to put all the cards exiled with it into your hand. Now, how do those cards get exiled? Well, whenever you discard a card, you exile it under Bag of Holding instead of putting it in your graveyard. Yeah, all the cyclers, they're going in the bag. Everything we discard for various reasons, even if we're screwed and we have to discard to hand size, which we don't want to do, they still go under the bag. Do you remember the song from like 2003? No. Just throw it in the bag. No. 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 Yeah. I don't, but I do remember Benefactor's Drought. From some commander set that I don't remember. It's one and a green for an instant. You untap all creatures. Whenever a creature an opponent controls blocks this turn, draw a card. Draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. It's at least a cantrip. You can probably make deals. And if they're if an opponent is in a weird situation where they are forced to block, you go, hey, you guys are actually untapped. And now I'm just going to draw six cards. I mean, you can just blow out a player because it untaps all creatures. So somebody makes an attack at a player who just, you know, maybe alpha. And they're like, well, okay, I'll send them at you. I'll untap all their creatures. Hey, make as many blocks as you want. I'm not going to stop you. Hey, look, I'm just going to draw some cards, okay? You guys got some beef, not me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you guys fight it out. Uh, we also like to make really, really big powers. And because we like to make big powers, we like to draw equal to those powers. That's the greens, like... That's their piece de resistance for you know drawing a million cards. That's yeah. how they do it. So th there's uh, four of them here. Uh, they're all on the deck to do that, to draw equal to its power. And it's Garuk Primal Hunter is a Planeswalker who does it. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker, which is a Garuk card that does it. Or it overruns, which is relevant. But it doesn't give trample. Remember no, that it does. Non-humans get plus three, plus three. So that's just extra, like... This could kill somebody. Yeah, but do remember that card doesn't give trample. It is big. It is big. Rich card's expertise, which does it, and then you get to play a card with converted mana cost five or less from your hand for free. Life's legacy, which you sacrifice the creature to do it. And if you want to go get something really big and beefy out of your deck, and you have one of these in your hand, go get Titan Oath Rex. Yeah, with oh, your natural yeah. order. Yeah, we have natural order in this deck, and we have not shown you many big creatures, but I think it's all going to start coming together when we get to the next category. So for now. We'll go to the next card, which happens to be a giant creature anyway. It's Grothama, All Devouring. It's a 10-8 for 5 mana. Whenever a creature attacks, it... Sorry, all creatures have. Whenever this creature attacks, you may have it fight Grothama. Then when Grothama leaves, anything that dealt damage to it is going to draw its controller that many cards. It's so weird. This basically just says you play it, you attack with 5 cats, you throw them all into Grothama, and then you draw 10 cards. Or you could just attack with 3 and then Grothama doesn't die. And we don't want you, Grothama. Well, when Grothama dies, that's how you draw cards. You don't draw cards unless he dies. Oh, yeah, He's Grothama. like an end boss. You're right. Grothama does have to Yeah, die. so you just suicide your cats, and you suicide Grothama. Who cares? You just paid five mana and a, what, a couple cycles to draw ten cards, and now all of your stuff is getting souped up. And next turn, um, Joel Rail's like, hey, that's an extra 50,000 power. 50,000? <laughs> because you have a ton of creatures in play. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Ornfame Viper is a... Oren Frostfang. Well, the word Viper is not... <laughs> Orin, Orin Frostfang turns all your creatures into Orin Fang Vipers. Oran Vipers. There's no Fang Why? in that, Shut but there up. is a Fang in this. Okay. It turns them all into Orin Vipers, which means when they attack, they have Death Touch, and whenever they deal damage to a player, you draw a card. All your creatures get that. Who wants to trade with stupid cat tokens that we're just going to keep making? The cat tokens make more cat tokens on your turn. They just cash in for cards. This is just an engine. I love this card. Oh, this card is really, really good. It's awesome. It's gonna and it's gonna give you those second card draws that you need too, because it's another way to do that. And greater good. We mentioned having giant creatures, which we will explain very shortly. But you let to sack them, draw cards equal to their power, then discard three cards. And if you have bag of holding, you're really not discarding anything, because bag of holding is one other way, like we just said, to make your hand size huge when you crack it. Yeah, you just throw it in the bag. Throw it in the bag. And the last one, that's out. I'm gonna just throw this as the best card in the deck, the gourmet bagel. Okay. Dalheimer's Archive. All this deck cares about is, is card drawing, card velocity, and just getting your hand huge. It doubles your life gain. I don't know if we have any. But it doubles your card draw as well if it's not your first draw of your actual turn. Yeah, as long as it's not your draw stop and your first draw. Cycling, <laughs> it's insane. 
a million cantrips. You can cantrip like six times for no mana if you just set this up right. Yeah, and if you have our camera archive off every single time you draw one card, you draw two cards, which means you trigger your little general Joel Ray L. Yeah, I, oh, I'll I know play, how to pronounce. I'll play Alhamar's Archive. archive. Uh, Elvish Visionary, draw two, get a cat, pass. Crack my bauble, draw two, get a cat, pass. Crack my other bauble, draw two, get a cat. Activate Guy Reach, draw two, discard one, get a cat. It was like, this sets up insane lines. That, that's you a, just don't even have to try. Was, this is just, I'm just going to point this out because uh, you, you do that thing where you like get really excited about something and you kind of just go, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> it's just like, it's just a funny I'm thing. Vomiting that, happiness. This deck is so ugh. cool. <laughs> okay, what about the last category, which is hand size matters, other ways besides Joel Royale to uh, take advantage of having 50 cards in hand? Yeah, so I went over it before because this deck cares about having no max hand size. So we put things that you would never see in too many green decks. Reliquary Tower, not a card you really put in too many green decks. Thought Vessel, a card you never put in the green deck, essentially. It's a mana rock. It's a, it's a mana rock that gives you no hand size. And one of my favorite cards oh, that yeah. I haven't played in a deck in God knows how long, Praetor's Council, which is five green, green, green. Return all cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Praetor's Council, you have no max hand size for the rest of the game. I know that card by heart because I freaking love that I guy. knew you would love it. I oh, knew you'd be happy that it was in here. Oh, it's one of my, it's, it was like in my original uh, Maelstrom Wander deck. I love the card. It's Absolutely insane. It. It's so splashy and huge in it. I feel like if you play it with this deck, you just feel like you're on a whole nother level. Oh, it's such a good card. It's 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 a card that if the deck is made to take advantage of it, it's, it is. can be game winning. It can. It, that's what I'm saying. It's like when you build your deck to actually use this card right, it becomes like eight mana. Sure. I don't win this turn, but if you let me untap, it sure is going to feel like I won. Storm coming, but, uh, buddy. <laughs> Rending Vines is next. It's just kind of like it slices, it dices, and it does care. It's one green green for an instant. You destroy an artifact or enchantment with mana cost less than the number of cards in your hand. Draw a card. So it's cantrip, it's removal, and it cares about the your hand size. Obviously, this is mostly just going to say destroy a thing, draw. It doesn't really matter how many things are in your hand, but I figured I'd put it here. No, it's cool. This is a really cool card. I mean, yeah. this, this card absolutely... No, it's cool. I just was, like, debating whether to put it here or not. I'll tell you what. This is this is a card I would strongly consider for a green deck. Because I know green has a lot of de ways to deal with uh, enchantments artifacts. But green doesn't usually struggle too much on hand size. So maybe this is a card I consider for more decks. I haven't, I've never looked at it. But the fact that it replaces itself on a cantrip is really good. And there's that four mana one. But four mana is decidedly too slow. Yes. That's too much mana. Uh, Masamuro, first to live. This is one of our beefy boys. He's three green, green, green. And he's a star, star. And the star is equal to twice the number of cards in your hand. Yeah. Uh, and a similar card is Sage of Ancient Lore, who is a star star equal to the cards in your hand, but he's a werewolf. So if one card was cast, or if no cards were cast, then it flips over and turns into a star star that's double. It's everybody's hand. hands. Oh, it's, it's not doubles. Everybody's oh, hands. That's right. I forgot. Yep. He's and right. has trample. And then when it enters is on the first human side, you forgot to mention that it draws a card. Oh, yeah. And it gives you a cat. Right. So you can tap out for it and not even feel bad. I did. I totally forgot about it on the front side. I, I read this card earlier because I wanted to remember it because I thought it was really cool. And then BC just like, no, you forgot a bunch of it. They, they don't call me the MTG encyclopedia for nothing. I think one person Ooh. called you that once. One person called me that once. <laughs> uh, Sasaya, Orochi Ascendant, is a three mana, two, three, I think. Uh, you can reveal your hand, and if you have seven or more lands, she flips, and then it says whenever you tap a land for mana, you add a mana for each other land that has the same name. Which is, this is the reason, so we, this is the reason that we went with 12 forests in the deck, because we're a monocolor deck, and usually we like to go a little more utility, but... Yeah, we'll explain a little more about that later, but this, if this goes off, I, it doesn't even kind of register as a real card. That is so much mana. This is also a card that I remember from Ranking of a Commander because when we read it, we said, Sasaya. I don't know why. I said, Sasaya, uh, because that's the noise like uh, Keegan-Michael Key makes when he does like a karate kick sometimes. Oh, Sasaya. That's <laughs> really weird. I, I specifically remember this from that because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I played the little clip of him. Did I? <laughs> no, I did. I think I edited it. Oh, yeah. That's great. Uh, okay, the next one. <laughs> this is a card that I will admit that I didn't read despite having looked at Probably 50 times. Right. I, I didn't know what this card <laughs> did. It's Realm Seekers from Conspiracy, and I wrote it off as trash, but I might, I might take a look at it again. It's four green green for a zero zero. Enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each card in everyone's hand. So it's already huge, and you can pay two and a green and remove a plus one plus one counter. Search your library for any land card and put it right into your hand. Any land? Literally just any land. I did not know it said that. Uh, that's extremely good. It makes this card a lot better, but it puts them in your hand. You have to remember that. It's not, it, not, it, it doesn't actually ramp, but... This thing's going to be huge. This thing is easily going to be a 10-10. No, I'm uh, thinking like 20-20 minimum. Well, I was oh, I was saying minimum was like a 10-10. Like, that's like I mean, bare yeah. bones minimum in a game of EDH. That's that's like, a weird scenario, though. That, Everybody has five cards. It's a 20-20. Yeah. 
I mean, let's uh, put the average cards that players are by having a hand by the time he plays is probably four. So it's probably I don't know that I usually don't go super low when I play. An average of sixteen, I would an average sixteen sixteen. It's uh, disgusting. This card is huge. And like, if you're trying to, if you're already accomplishing your game plan, it's going to be double what we're talking about. Also, side note, it's a zero zero. Uh, our commander's ability does base power toughness. Oh yeah, you're right. So when you, so if you pump it to a six six, it's a six six plus however many counters it has. Oh, that's little, pretty sweet. Just a little synergy with the deck. Yeah, and that Realm Seekers is just absolutely giant. Uh, the last one is weird. And I didn't know it existed, and I bet you didn't either. Inner Calm, Outer Strength. Nope. Two and a green for an instant arcane. Target creature gets plus one, plus one for each card in your hand. Yes, I okay, I did know this card existed. I don't remember why I know this card exists, but I very specifically remember it. If The name is so weird. If we go big enough, this is, you can just kill somebody out of nowhere with a cat. <laughs> yeah, oh, you didn't block this cat. Well, I'm sorry, you lose. I'm, you lose. I'm, I'm sorry take, to say, sir, you're dead. Take 20. <laughs> it, it can be plus 20 easily. Uh, it also combos with any of the aforementioned power matters card draw spells, even if it's only something mediocre like four. You just pay three mana to draw four cards. <laughs> I like how you say easily. I mean, it's not easily. You is, when you get the 20 cards in your hand, you've gone off and you've successfully done what your deck wants to do. It's not easily. But yeah, I think this deck great. draws cards real fast. You're going to have to like figure something out. You have to kill Jorail or they're going to like snowball fast. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't. Cards, cards beget more cards in this deck. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I completely agree with that. With that sentiment, that statement. But I'm just saying, it's not like the deck. You sit down with this deck, and it's like, yeah, uh, turn one, twenty cards in my hand. You got to go through a few hoops. You got to wait till at least turn four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we got to talk about winning the game. And there's a few things to mention. So what, what we got? Uh, we got go wide, which we're gonna we're making cats every turn. That's the first thing that's gonna really get us to go wide. It's simple. We know how to get cats. We've gone over how to get cats already. We also have tender shoot dryad, who is a 4-4? Four, 2-2. Four? Two, two. Why can I not remember this card at all? You're like I'm, 0 for 6 today. I, I'm 0 for 6 on Tender Shoot Dryad. That's probably true. It's a 2-2 two, two for 5 mana, and on each upkeep, you get a 1-1 one, one sapling, and if you have the City's Blessing, your saplings get plus 2, plus 2. This is just an easy army in the can. Uh, <laughs> the can. That sounds weird when you say the can. <laughs> army in the can, it's just a, a no-effort way to make a million creatures. An army in the potty? That's how I'm imagining you say the a, can. Yeah, a can is... <laughs> The preferred. Yeah, I don't like the can. But even easier army in a can card than Tender Street Dry is Field of the Dead. It's amazing. It's so dumb. I love this card. It is just going to be the most free way ever to just get a bunch of tutus. This is one of those cards that me and BZ have had many discussions on. I love it. I think it's great. BZ super duper loves it and thinks it's the best card that ever was I printed. I think it's one of the... <laughs> one, it is the card I'll basically go out of my way the most to build around in Commander. I think it's so good. Talk about it later. We can maybe do like a pet card argument sure. for funsies at some point. But uh, it's great in this deck. We have one snow covered forest. Usually you want to split them evenly. But we mentioned with Shasaisa that you uh, you want more basic regular forests. <laughs> uh, and then with even with stuff like Realm Seekers, go tutor up Field of the Dead for free. No, Realm Seekers is a sweet card. I really it, like that. But I, also, did not, yeah, did not notice that. What else could Realm Seeker do? Oh, it could be really really big, so we can one shot players. Yeah, I mentioned <laughs> Titan Othrax, which. How many times has Titan Othrax been relevant in this deck already? This deck looks so cool, and I love that card. And it's a test and training to give these things trample. And we have Rogue's Passage to make them unblockable full stop. And you can just kill somebody. Yeah. Titan Othrax has a, has a lot of cool things you can do. If, like I said, if you have Garuk out on the field, and you have uh, your cat. Net, or your, no, if you, if, you have, if you have a natural order in your hand, is what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, and a then cat. You go, oh, yeah, I'll just totally sack this cat, get a Titan Othrax so I can draw 11. How and then I also have Titan Othrax in play. On a side note, maybe you just get, we don't even need to get Titan Off Rex. You know what's almost always probably bigger? Realm, Realm Seeker. Seeker. Yeah, yeah, Realm Seeker is almost probably always bigger. Yeah, I tell you, North Rex is more of a like, it's just a fallback. That's the next best. Yeah. You uh, might already have yeah. Realm Seeker. We're going to beat the credit of people. What are these possible ads you put yeah, here? Yeah, so I tell, I, there's like a, a, a short list of like five or six cards. And I was like, should I put this in the deck? And I couldn't decide. And then I think, well, it depends on which way you take the deck because there's a combo, there's more of a combo y version, and then there's more of a Voltron one hit kill you version and I don't think they want to play the same cards so if you want the more combo route I would add Kozilek Butcher of Truth to this deck because it lets you literally draw infinite cards with greater good you have to explain well you're not infinite but like once you have these creatures that are just completely ridiculously huge like you can sack it to draw like 50 and then discard Kozilek and then you just start discarding these it's just it, it gets weird 
Kozlak makes it so that you don't deck and you can keep, like, if you discard cards, mm -hmm. you can um, draw them again. You know, so your, your deck is bigger. The only reason I asked you to explain is because you chose the word literally. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the only reason I asked. <laughs> it was more of a figuratively, literally infinite. It was. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, oh, so literally. I wonder what the combo is. This could be cool. There, there no. probably are <laughs> actual ways to go infinite. I didn't, d you know, decipher that. Yeah, I wouldn't have asked you otherwise. Just yeah. so you know. <laughs> and the the Voltron brew, I would add lightning greaves and probably key to the city. Because you want to, if you care more about that stuff, you want to make your guys unblockable easier. Oh yeah, key to the, key to the city. Another nitpicky nerds like little pet card. It is one of our pet cards that people are like, "Wow, that's actually really good." You guys are great deck builders and also amazing. And also, you have really nice muscles and you're sexy. And we love you both. We know. That's yeah. We know you we can. Know you feel that way. You guys can keep saying it in the comments over and over again. We'll heart all those comments. We'll heart all your comments. We'll interact with you, just like a good YouTube channel should. Yes, and this this was the coolest deck I've built in a while. I had so much fun. This deck is the coolest mono green deck I've ever seen. I'm glad that I'm glad you had so much fun building it. Uh, yeah, I had, I had I was very busy today, and busy's like, I'll, don't worry, I got this. I actually didn't even say that. I just did it. Uh, I didn't no. even tell you what I was doing. Nope. I heard it. I heard you in the other room say, I got this. <laughs> it was just I was watching George Lopez. <laughs> does he say that? He says that's like his catchphrase. He never has it. Uh, I mean, he always yeah, says he does. He's George Lopez. He could right. never have it. Okay. What? Uh, who, who supports the channel? Uh, the our, the first way to support the channel was to go to patreon.com forward slash user forward slash nitpicking nerds. And special thanks to all the people who have already done that, aka our patrons. Those guys are awesome. You guys are the best. Like, literally, the literal best. <laughs> we love you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. And super secret special shout outs to Patrick Gilbert and Esper Ragnar. You guys are great. And we did it last time. And you know what? We're just going to double down and do it again. We're trying to get a preview card. Everyone in our audience, even you, first-time listeners, want us to get a preview card. That's how you support the channel this time. You just need to go anywhere and tell anyone we exist because word, word will spread. And then guess what? Three or four months down the pipeline, well, what's that? Nitpicking Nerds preview card. It'll be amazing. Yeah. We're looking for a preview card for the next set. That's what we want. We've that is your mission. Help us because we, we have done everything we possibly can and... Crickets. We've tried, we've tried our best. We've reached out in the ways that we were told to, in the ways that other people have told us to. Hasn't worked. But it's fine. No big deal. But I'm still gonna try. We're gonna get. We're throwing a hat. We're throwing a hat in the ring. We want other. We want everyone to help us. Help us, fans. No, we're actually. We're giving our hat to them, and they're throwing it in the ring. We already threw. Well, that's still throwing our hat. We're in the mass ring. producing hats and giving them out and throwing them into the same ring. Uh, that's fair. So and Tip it. If, uh, no. Uh, if you can't get enough. Oh, yeah. of Me. Most mostly me. Uh, then you can watch me stream weekdays from twelve to four. Working on a new schedule might be something a little earlier in the day, but right now, currently, 8 to 4. 8 to 4. Wow. I'm great at saying times. 12 to 4 Eastern Standard Time. Perfect. How about the tidbit? Because it's your turn. Tidbit about my life? I threw shade last time. You did throw shade last time. Uh, it sounds like a bomb is being dropped outside right now. That does not count. That doesn't count, we but need it a does. real tangible thing about our lives. Uh, a real tangible thing about my life. I have been... Working extremely hard in the channel this past, especially th this week specifically. Same. Like, yeah, we've been putting in like so much work and it's awesome. Like, and if it, it feels so good when we sit down, like, I feel like I haven't had a break. And if, but at the same time, because I'm doing something I love, it doesn't matter that I don't get the break. I haven't really wanted one. Yeah, exactly. It's felt so good that we're cranking out, we're doing the five videos a week this week. So enjoy uh, the extra Bonus content. content. We're going to, uh, for the next couple weeks, I want to try and do it until we'll prob see. probably for the next. Two weeks, and then we'll probably have to slow down a bit. But I am excited to pump out some content. Also, excited to keep on streaming, too. Streaming's been going really well. The got emotes. Emotes are live. Yeah, emotes are live. Our average viewership is going up. Check us out. Uh, actually, right after you watch this video, because uh, I'll probably be streaming. It'll probably be perfect. You're just going to do another stream? What? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Because today, yeah, is, they don't see it now. Yeah, they, they see the video tomorrow oh. when we put it out after I edit it. Yeah, they don't. this isn't live. Yeah, this isn't. We're not. We have not. No, we're not. Uh, what's his name? Who said effort? We're doing it live? Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. We're not Bill O'Reilly. That's, that's an official statement. From that's the our freaking, official sign off now. Uh, we're not Bill O'Reilly, Tribe Scout.